Yo, what's up, guys? This is Bron Johnson and Nathan Kwan here for The Hot Johnson. We are so excited to be here today because we are wanting to connect with all of those men. Basically, probably my past self and your past self. My past self, too, for sure. Yeah, yeah. The, kind, the kind of man, I mean, I can just like briefly talk about what my struggle has been in my life, um, being a recovering people pleaser, someone who has always grew up thinking that my sense of love, security, connection, worth came from other people's attention, other people's approval of me. And I know that there's so many men out there that like, and I feel it in my heart and I know you do too, because mm -hmm. this is what you do professionally. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But there's so many men out there who are struggling inside, suffering in silence, wanting to find better, deeper emotional connection with their woman or have more respect in life at work. And I think that's a great way to dovetail into introducing our, our guest speaker today. This is Nathan Kwan. He's a certified men's coach. I've talked to him a few times on the phone, just hearing his story. I'm so excited for him to share that today. Why don't you get into a little bit about why you feel like you wanted to be on our podcast and uh, why you're really here and and dovetail into your story. It's a, it's a powerful story and I know a lot of people will be affected by it. Thank you so much, Bron. Yeah, I'm super honored to be here. And uh, the reason why I'm here is because I have just been very compelled to share my story because I've definitely been down that people pleaser route as well and went into a very dark place and, and was luckily able to pull myself out so yeah, I share my story as a way to just inspire to also, it feels like something that is important for me to share because this has been my experience and my journey throughout life. And I don't see it as something that happened to me, but it's something that happened for me. And this is something that I now coach guys through. I'm able to guide men uh, into, into their power and step into their purpose and confidence with women, with life, with everything that uh, that they want to embody in their lifetime. So beautiful. This is, yeah, this is something that's like super dear to my heart. And um, yeah, I, I can definitely share where I came from. Please do, please do. It's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty powerful story in that. I mean, it's raw, it's real, and I think there. I don't think I know that there's a lot of men and maybe even women who can relate to some aspects of your story. So mm. take her away, man. Um, take your time and thank you. Get brother. real with it. You bet. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I remember when I was a kid, four years old. Um, I was always very enamored by feminine beauty. When I would go to like my parents' friends' weddings. I would just see these like displays of devotion and and beauty and and love and affection between uh, a man and a woman. I was like, wow, I want that one day. Mm. And um, me too. <laughs> I remember I remember feeling that too when I was young. <laughs> totally, yeah. 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 I was like, wow, yeah, like wow. just the awe and wonder and the innocent, just like, oh my god, I want that. Yeah. And when I was at home, my experience was entirely different. Mm. Um, my mom and my dad had no affection whatsoever. Hmm. And um, when I was four years old, uh, my dad cheated on my mom. Hmm. And uh, that's when there was like this flip of a switch where my mom just completely changed. She took all of her anger, uh, so much of it on onto me. Were you an only and, child? Well, I was, my brother was just born. Okay. Yeah, so when my mom, turned into this angry person, you know, as a four year old, I didn't know what the fuck to do. I was like super scared and didn't feel safe anymore. And so at that point I just made it my job to provide my mom's happiness. Mm. It's like, if I'm a good boy, if I get good grades and all the things, then, then I will receive love. Right. And that was the pattern that kept, uh, kept going throughout my early teenage years and even in subtle ways into even just years ago. And I still am healing from bits of it, but, uh, you too. <laughs> but, uh, throughout that early stage of my life, I was able to really put on a mask and, and be that good boy. I was mm -hmm. really good at it. And also I had this darkness within me that wanted to escape from the fakeness. Didn't feel like being the good boy was truly who I was. And so I found ways to numb my pain of not being able to be authentic through first junk food. And then I found porn at a very young age. 
once I found porn, it was just like this, it was dial up back in the day. And it was like, you know, <laughs> like every chance I got, like when I was home alone, it was like, oh my God, this is my chance. Like, this is my chance to get off and like, you know, get into that like fantasy world that perpetuated into my teenage years. I remember when I finally started to date girls, I was like 18 when I had my first girlfriend. Um, the first two girlfriends, I wasn't really able to sexually escalate. I wasn't able to go all the way. And I heard all my friends talking about how much sex they were having and blah, blah, blah. And, and I was like, what the fuck? Like I was just so, I had so much like, yeah, sexual frustration. And it was like, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Almost like, like that kind of story was going on in my head. So, uh, this very angsty teenager eventually found ways to rebel. Mm. I'm done being the good boy. I'm just going to, I'm going to do what I want when I want and fuck the rules. So like got into a whole bunch of trouble, like with the cops, car chases, street racing, eventually lost my virginity with a, an escort. Mm. And, um, it was a disaster. <laughs> the condom broke and all the things oh yeah. shit <laughs> it was, it was, uh. anyways your plan b of having a sexual partner really ended up as plan b <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah so um that was although not fun the start of my sex addiction um because it was my avenue of being able to explore my sexuality i just kept going down that road and I eventually started dating escorts. I knocked one up, almost became a dad before she miscarried two, two months later and, uh, wow. got robbed violently at a, at a brothel. And after that point, I just fell into this really dark, depressive stage in my life mm -hmm. where I just, uh, question my existence mm -hmm. question like why like how how can i even plug myself back into the real world with all of these mistakes and the shame around it right that i that i held right just around that time my my entire family extended family like 20 of us went to europe for a family trip and that was like very beautiful trip of like adventure connection love and so like when i was there i just got so inspired it's like wow like okay there is a reason to live mm. I, I i want to i want to keep going what was the essence of the turning point do you remember what was it really what was the essence that made you make that flip and probably wasn't just one thing it was a gradual process maybe but what was like the essence of that that made you realize okay there's something more to be living for i think up until that point i always internalized that it was my parents fault that like I got to that point, mm. I was like blaming them. Mm -hmm. And that trip showed me Perspective. experience yep. of, of my family. Oh, wow. I mean, we were all in, so, in a new environment and we were all just having fun, right? So mm. it just kind of broke, it was like a pattern interrupt. Mm -hmm. And so like that, and also just seeing the beauty of the world, it just sparked that awe and wonder that I had as a child again. Mm. I was like, wow, like that's like, I want more of that. Mm. So mm. when I got back, I lost a bunch of weight, eventually got a job in the car business, mm -hmm. uh, grew super quick, climbed the corporate ladder, and then really was able to amount like a good level of, of success. Got a, got a six figure job, glass office, company car, all the things. And it's like, I have everything that society tells me I should have. Right. I, in order to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. In order to be happy, to be successful. Right. Right. And like, you know, also in order for my parents to be proud of me. Ah. Right. Got to get that love from the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> what the little voice says anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So like, it was still coming from uh, like a place of wanting to prove myself. Of course. And, um, you know, eventually even in the work environment, just uh corporate politics i wasn't able to like really be authentic mm -hmm. once again it's like a pattern of like oh, i can't like be authentic in spaces that i find myself in right and at the same time experiencing that within my relationships as well right right and so eventually covid happened i realized that like it, that was my opportunity to really put myself out there into starting my first business and that was kind of the turning point, the actual turning point 
where like I started to realize all of the things that I was brushing under the rug, mm. like all of the shame and the pain that I like did not face mm. and just use things to cover up. Those things started to surface mm. uh, because I was in a very beautiful relationship at the time. And also because my parents weren't super supportive of my journey in business. Okay. So like all of my childhood stuff was like coming back up for me to face and heal. Right. Right. And, uh, and so by doing that, I was able to really face off with my demons. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it was very messy at, at a point. And over the last two years, I hired my first coach, got super inspired, like, whoa, like this is the most powerful work that I've ever done for myself. And I feel like I've, I have so much passion around mental health, um, emotional intelligence, power, like powerful communication, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and just healthy relating mm -hmm. that like this is, I was so inspired that I just invested in myself. Amazing. Invested 50K on myself in 2022, got my certification, and now I'm coaching men to step into their power, into their purpose, and be able to find a woman who will amplify what they're building for themselves. Mm. And so that is the main thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the main thing you focus on with your clients, these mm -hmm. men that come to you for support, for help. It's really about creating higher quality relationships with either their existing partner or learning how to attract and create high quality relationships with high quality women. Is that correct? Yes, by way of creating first a high quality relationship with self. That's key. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. What's the essence of why you do this work now? What is it about doing this that makes you feel like you have to do it? Because like you said, mm. that first business was a little bit more ego driven. It was fulfilling a lot of your needs. But what is it about coaching men in the ways that you do that feels more like a calling to you? What's that all about? Mm -hmm. When I was in that very dark period of my life, mm -hmm. there was this moment in my bedroom where I was just like wallowing in my own shit. And uh, I heard a voice come through. And the voice said, you're meant to do something great, Nathan. Just keep going. Wow. And I didn't wow. know what that voice was at the time. Mm. But I recognize now it was the voice of my higher self, mm. the voice of God through me. Wow. And luckily, I listened and I kept following the that voice and just taking the next step and taking the next step. And I know that I say I luckily followed the voice because statistically, not a lot of men are listening to that voice. And so from me stepping into guiding men and, and sharing this work with people and sharing my story, I wish to have the transformation that I have been able to experience inspire others to do the same for themselves because this this world needs more healthy embodied leading powerful men out there yeah it's like we need that Absolutely. in our world today we need healthy male role models we need you know men that we can look up to and and know that they're 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 operating from a place of integrity in every single area of their life whether it's business whether it's relationships family like integrity to me is now universal. I had to go through a journey of not having integrity mm -hmm. for so long, like living a double life for so long mm -hmm. that now like that's the only way, right? That's the only way. And, and I'm seeing that as like the future of what a healthy masculine role model looks like. Right. Well, and it's interesting. Like I think about the men watching this right now and I remember what it was like to be in a position where I was trying to get better with women. And the biggest questions that were going through my mind, and maybe you can relate to this, is how how can I how can I get the girl? How can I get the girl to like me? Or how can <laughs> how can I um, have more sex with women? You know, how can I be more attractive? And I realized over time, I realized now more than ever. And I think, I think we all know this deep down is that it's not, those are the wrong questions Yeah. The the, the right questions and to what your core reason and, and mo motive is with the work that you do is it's not about how do I get 
this. Mm -hmm. It's about how do I get this yeah. dialed in and to be a man that I respect. Mm -hmm. to, when I look in the mirror, I say, I fucking love this human. Mm -hmm. And you say it with power, but also a sense of groundedness, yeah. which I think is what that healthy masculinity really looks like. Mm -hmm. And I would love to he hear you comment on that a little bit. And I, I think that, you know, to answer the question of why I think people are coming onto this podcast, how to create better relationships with women, it's about embody learning how to embody that natural masculinity that you already have with inside yourself. We just need to take away all of the program shit that's blocking us from connecting with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'd love to hear your comments on what that looks like. Like when you connect with a man who's reaching out to you for help, and obviously you could t t tackle this question in, in a lot of different ways, but what does that look like to help, help that man? What do you say yeah. to him? What does he need to hear? I will first say that um, the greatest luxury in today's world is a clear conscience. Mm. Mm. And... Uh, which is which ties to what I said about integrity, right? Because that very thing that you were just talking about, the extraction and the taking and like, oh, let me do this so that I can get sex or get the woman or get money or whatever it Status, is. Status, approval, love, <clears throat> exactly, attention. Exactly. So it's like this transactional behavior that can often forego our own sense of integrity and self-respect which i think could be one definition of toxic masculinity yeah right transactional exactly uh, abuse of power in order to get something exactly. outside of yourself exactly exactly for personal gain a lot of the men that come to me for help are in a place where they've done all the things that society has told them to do, but there's still something more that they know they are missing. Again, speaking to the pattern of always trying to get something outside. So it's like this constant hustle and chase of like something outside of themselves that they're, they're failing to see that like the fulfillment and the love and the approval that they are seeking can only ever truly be found within themselves. And then realizing that there we have so many inner voices that take us away from who we truly are yeah right that those voices may be modeled after our parents voices our bullies voices society's voices right and <clears throat> and really i call myself the inner voice architect at times i really help guys weave out the voices that are toxic to their highest potential and let them really start to feel what it is like to embody their most powerful voice, their most authentic and bold mm -hmm. and just no fucks given voice. Mm -hmm. Also while being tethered to their heart. Right. Key. Yeah. Key. Tethered to their heart. Yeah. The inner voice architect. <laughs> I love that. Right. Because when I think of my past self, it's like, what did I really need? What did I really need? And what do you really need in order to be the man that you really want to be? And mm -hmm. we think it's about learning and understanding new concepts to add on to our brain and in, in, in our in our in our bodies and our system and our understanding. And the truth is, is that you're already worthy. The truth is, is that you already have everything that you need in order to get the woman, in order to get the women, whatever you're wanting in life, in order to get the career, in order to have the life that you really want. It's the programmed bullshit that you have within you still that needs to be reprogrammed. Reprogrammed and also like turning up the volume on the, the voices that actually serve you mm. and turning down the volume on the ones that don't. Right. And the only way we can turn down the volume on the voices, like the like the inner bully, the sabotage, the judge, uh, the judge is to re really face them, understand them and see what it is they're, that they're actually trying to do. Right. Right. Because the inner judge, the inner bully, the saboteur, like they're all just trying to protect us. Yes. From either failure, from looking stupid. Yes. Um, 
or like just protecting us from the wounds that we felt as a child. Right. Right. And so once we were able to face those voices and really recognize that only we have the power to actually hold and protect our our wounded child Mm -hmm. inside that's when we start to release the the charge of those really toxic voices that's right right and so that's what you do with your clients exactly that's beautiful yeah so like essentially i want to give you a high five because that (laughs) is i mean i have so much respect for you doing that work in the world because it it needs to be done i mean in the in the sense that so many men are looking for that i mean put your hand up if you are the kind of person that if you're the kind of man who learned that what it means to be a man was to be tough to protect to serve but the problem with that is those are all good qualities but the problem is is that what about what about us and our mm-hmm. and our hearts and our core needs as human beings. You know, the inner child that got denied love, that got denied connection, what about him? Mm -hmm. You know, if we're ignoring that part of us, then we're gonna live our lives in this cycle of pain and continuing to try to get love and connection from outside of ourselves without addressing that part of ourselves fundamentally. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I have gone through and a lot of my clients go through as well is showing up in such a way since a child thinking that we need to achieve perform acquire and show that to the world in order for us to even feel worthy of celebration in order for us to even feel lovable Mm. and useful and accepted by society and it's so it's always like something that we get outside of us will give us permission to finally feel worthy mm-hmm. and loved. Mm-hmm. And so it's this constant, never ending chase for that thing. And so to your point, it's like, how do we source that within ourselves? Exactly. Exactly. And when we are able to actually start doing that, that's when we, that's when true confidence starts to just radiate right. from us. And it becomes this experience where you have such a healthy relationship with yourself. You are going out into the world and you are speaking your truth. You are saying what you want to say in a really raw and vulnerable way, coming from a place of deep authenticity Mm -hmm. and going after what you really want as well. And so you start to have freedom from this neediness of approval from people in society and the programs that to what you said earlier to do what you were supposed to do in order to get that that love yeah 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 i I often say that one of my biggest spiritual experiences was starting a business because i had to be the only one to have my back right right i had to be the one that believed in myself right and again it's that voice that came through in my dark period was like you're meant to do great things keep going it's like Mm -hmm. i believe in you Mm -hmm. and just like that like me being able to have my back in that way has allowed me to just not give my power to anybody else uh in the sense of how they perceive me or needing their approval or any of that kind of stuff it's like obviously it's it's important for us to have a good support system but also being able to ground ourselves into the knowing of our own power of our own sense of self like that that is the most beautiful work that any man can do for themselves totally and the irony is is that when you the more you do that work the more you naturally attract what you want yep it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like performing in life, in your work or with women. Mm -hmm. You don't have to perform. You just are the person that you naturally are and you love and you respect that version of yourself so much. (laughs) And the people that are meant to come into your life, come into your life. And it's so easy. It's so, and it's so fun. (laughs) And And the people that don't, it doesn't feel like rejection. It just feels like redirection. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I love that. It's like, I love that because, ah, I wish I could just like, I wish I could talk to my 20 year old self and just be like, stop, stop chasing, 
stop chasing, stop trying, just yeah. start being the most fun, natural version of yourself you possibly can and stop giving a fuck about what other people think of you mm -hmm. because what they think of you has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them and their current state of wherever they are in their lives. They're just projecting their state onto you. Mm -hmm. And so just be you and the right people will come and the wrong people will naturally gravitate out of your life. Yeah. The more that I have deepened into this work on myself, the more that I have felt magnetic to the people, the opportunities, the women that are truly meant for me. Yes. And also the more I have the power to say no to the things that aren't meant for me. Ah. Cause that, that is also essential. Cause like recovering people pleaser, I used to say yes to everything. Like, yes. Oh, this girl's giving me a little attention. Yes. Like, let me just see. And, totally. uh, and it's like, it's like, no, like this, this does not align. Like I get to say no and I get to do so with as much grace as possible and kindness as possible. And that's a practice because I've had a big journey of learning how to say no with grace because as a recovering people pleaser for such a long time, I, the way I see it, and, and this is something that I witness in a lot of men as well. It's like, we have this people pleaser. Who's like the, the person who over accommodates and says yes to everything and just placates and, and, you know, and then, and then once that tension and that resentment starts to build up, we swing to the other side and we become this like asshole. Yeah. Like the, the, the beast comes out yes, and expresses his truth in a very cutting and, and very disconnected, angry, resentful, vengeful kind of manner. Right. Totally. So it's like this pendulum swing on either side. That's not healthy. Yeah. But like finding that authentic, no, where it's like solid and grounded. It's like, no, because this is just who I am and I am okay with walking away. And like being able to say no has allowed me to feel what a true yes is mm. in my life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. And if I'm being honest, I even really discovered the core of this recently that the one of the biggest powers that we have in all of our relationships in life is our willingness and ability to be okay with walking away. Mm -hmm because it is only then where we are truly non-needy where we yeah. where we feel so good about self mm -hmm. that we are truly okay if we are not connected with a friend or a lover our our wife um our work because we have so much confidence within ourselves that if this person or if this event or this thing is drifting out of my life that must mean that it's actually not for me and that's okay. I feel so good about who I am and so confident that I know that I can create something better in my life somewhere else. Not just know that I can, I know that that's what it means, that yeah. there's literally another door opening that's better for me. Yes, love that, love that, yes. So if there was one thing that you could tell men out there who are struggling in their relationships or in work and life, What's the core thing or three things that you would want to tell men that they need to start doing in order to go on to the right track of cultivating healthy masculinity and leadership in their lives? What does that look like? Whenever we're in a dark place in life or just feeling lost, um, it's easy to point outside, point to the woman, point to their circumstances to find reasons why things are the way they are. And my challenge to all the men out there who are feeling this way is to look within yourself and see how you can lead yourself into a more empowered place in life, whether it's in your work, your finances, your way of relating your communication skills. Like there, there's more than likely something within your own life that you're not fully actualizing the potential of. Right. And until we really look at that and get honest with ourselves, it was like, okay, like maybe I wanted to get in shape for the longest time and I'm not there right now. Right. Or maybe I have wanted to let go of this toxic job and finally start my business, my passion project. Right. 
right? All of these little things that we haven't done yet for ourselves, in my opinion, directly correlated with what we're, ex what we're experiencing externally, because when we're not, we, when we don't respect ourselves enough to do the things that we know we're meant to do in this world, how can we expect for the people around us to respect us? Mm. Amen, brother. Fucking love that. So yeah. powerful. And I'd love to share or add on to what you're saying too, because what I'm, when I'm hearing that and what the way I would say it to the men out there and the women, this applies to women too. This is, this is a yep. human problem at its core, which is shifting from blaming the outside world for our problems as human beings, as men. Stop mm. blaming the women. Stop blaming your job, your boss, the current um, economic climate. And look inside yourself and start taking responsibility for the honest calling within of what you really want to be doing in your life. Start taking responsibility for all that is wrong in your life and ask yourself. And we do that by getting honest with what is the common denominator of mm -hmm. all of our problems. Exactly. Right? Like what Gary Vee says, for every, every finger that we point, point three thumbs back at yourself. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. that's a big part of what it means to cultivate healthy masculinity mm -hmm. is to be able to look within and to admit to yourself, I'm the one that's creating all of my problems in, in my life. And if I want my life to get better, I have to get fucking real and honest with myself about what am I believing I have to do and instead shift inward and to ask myself, what do I actually fucking want to do? Mm -hmm. What is the real me crying for to create in the world? That is what we need to take responsibility for. And if we start as human yeah. beings, start shifting our focus onto that yeah. transformation. I had a conversation recently with a, with a client of mine. He just signed on to work with me and he's 52 years old. Mm. Beautiful. One of the things that he said that really stuck and moved him to tears was that I've, for throughout the last 50 years, basically my entire life, I've never actually fully let anybody in. Mm. I've never actually sh had the courage to share all of myself. And fear of intimacy is a real thing. Mm -hmm. we, we put on all of these masks and facades in hopes to be liked, but we're not actually showing our deepest core of who we are. Yes. Right. And I've been there. Yes. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I still, I, I yeah. still have some walls up from yeah. allowing my highest authentic self to be shown. Me too, man. Yeah. Me too. Well, we all do. Yeah. 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 For sure. And it comes in layers, right? We, yes. we, uh, heal some of it and we show more of ourselves yeah. and then there's the, the patterns can resurface yeah. throughout different periods of our lifetime. Yeah. And, you know, one of the most powerful moments of that conversation I had with him was just asking, how does it feel like that for basically your entire life that you've never actually let anybody in? And just really just sit with that and, and like the, the pain of not being able to be fully seen for who we are. Yeah. And my challenge to you is to look at yourself in the mirror first and start seeing yourself, start to really get honest and determine the next step that you can do to put yourself in the right direction. Mm. And maybe it's getting some support. Maybe it's going to the gym. Maybe it's cleaning up your diet. Maybe it's starting that passion project, project, right? That one thing that you've been avoiding is probably the one thing that is going to create the best results. Yeah. And I love that you're speaking in terms of one step at a time, because I think oftentimes we look at all of the things that we need to do in order to make our lives better. And it feels like eating an elephant. And it's like, look at yourself now and acknowledge the number one thing that you can tackle right now that you know that you need to do that you have been putting off in order to 
move mm-hmm. forward in a more authentic direction. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm curious if you want to share what ended up happening with this man that you've been coaching or that you were coaching um, when he when he admitted that to you. Has there been any transformation in regards to encouraging him to have the courage to open up more to the people or in the ways that are meaningful to him in order to allow more intimate connection? Yeah. This man specifically that I talked about literally just started. Okay. So, I mean, even in just the saying yes to himself, he's already been experiencing a level of certainty of mm-hmm. of where he's headed mm-hmm. right because saying yes to yourself is the first step because that is already signaling to your spirit that you are worthy of stepping into something different it's so powerful right that's so powerful yeah and then and then once you say the yes then you start we start doing the work right so a lot of my clients have uh, experience fear of intimacy and fear of letting people in and vulnerability and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I've had one client who, when he first started worth working with me, he was always overthinking, always like needing to be perfect. And in that headspace was never really putting himself out there mm-hmm. and, um, just always got in his own way. And, uh, we've been able to really dig deep and face the voices that have been keeping him stuck Mm -hmm. in the same patterns, uh, release the pain of that through trauma and somatic work and, uh, inner child work, parts work, all that kind of stuff. Yes. And just reprogramming his entire nervous system to now be in a place in his life where he is thriving in his business. He's got a lineup of women wanting to date him. And, uh, it's just beautiful to see. And, uh, I have this also have this other client who when he first started working with me he had just separated with his partner who he had a kid with and you know they were in a co-parenting situation and came to me and started working with me from a place of being very um in pain and resentful Mm -hmm. of how the relationship uh, ended and we were able to really face off with that pain and help him come back into a place of power Mm. and start to communicate from his heart with that woman. And now they are actually having more intimacy again, and they're starting to entertain the possibility of stepping back into a relationship. Wow. And really this this is not even just about the relationship. It's about their kid too, right? right? It's like, you know, the things that we do for ourselves have ripple effects on everybody around us. And I have experienced that on a personal level where like everybody around me is really feeling the impact of the love that I feel within myself. Of course. And that is like something that I'm so grateful for because not only was I robbing myself of that experience, I was robbing the people I love of who I truly am. Yes. Right. And yeah. This work has really allowed for me to live my highest potential and be so proud of who I've become. And I'm seeing the men that are in my world uh, go through the same journey. I'm so honored. I love that. And I I think that's actually a really nice way to close this podcast. This video is to think that you are robbing the world. You're robbing your loved ones, your family, your coworkers, your career, your clients. You're robbing them of your real self by not engaging in this kind of work. And Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of like, you know, work with Nathan or anything like that. But I think there's going to be guys who see this and are like, I need to connect with Nathan. How do do guys connect with you? Yeah, I'm happy for all the guys in the audience here who are interested. I'm happy to offer a free session just to see what it's like Beautiful, and, and to explore things that we may have talked about in this conversation and how that reflects in your life. Um, I'm happy to offer that to the guys here. I'm also on Instagram. I share content around these kinds of conversations and you can follow me at the dot Nathan Kwan. Awesome. It'll be right here, right below my finger. I'll put it up right there. (laughs) Awesome, man, man. 
beautiful work. So, so Thank great. You, so, so grateful for men like you who are doing the work. And I'm, I'm doing similar work in my practice as well. Um, you are honing in specifically with men. And I know that there's women out here too watching this and they're so grateful for your work too, mm. because there's, there's a lot of men that are, are suffering in silence. And so mm -hmm. it's so important. So thank you so much for coming on our show, The Hot Johnson today. And we will be back next week with a new episode. It's going to be a good one. So look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate you. All our love. Keep it real. Peace.